more than two weeks after BC teen Amanda Todd took her life, we are now learning that she was hardly alone. Some of the people who tormented her are part of a sophisticated network that preys on young girls. To say the 15-year-old was bullied is just scratching the surface. Todd was provoked, exploited, and blackmailed, and it appears a network of men is still at it, trying to draw in other girls. Tonight, we're showing you the latest seedy side of the internet. In a disturbing computer hacking case that authorities are calling sex torsion. Sex and extortion are being used online. He started threatening me with the nude photos. He threatened to submit them to my company. So what is sextortion? Young people, usually girls, coerced or convinced into sending nude photos online or exposing themselves during live web chats. Those images are then used as threats, sometimes to get the victim to be more sexually explicit. The individuals who do this call themselves cappers, lurking in video chat rooms, secretly recording or screen capturing the person they're chatting with. That's what happened to Amanda Todd. Her manipulation was even highlighted within the Capper community. She was included in this crass animated YouTube video in a series called The Daily Capper. While another girl from Block has been talked about a lot this week. Announcing Amanda. The FBI warned about sextortion earlier this year, but how do you police a crime that happens in some of the darkest corners of the Internet? Patrick McGuire is a journalist who started looking into Amanda Todd's death and uncovered a very organized community of adult men blackmailing these young teenage girls. I spoke with him earlier today. So you heard about the Amanda Todd case and started poking around. You almost stumbled across this capping business. Yeah, right? I mean, I've been describing it to people as if, like, I pulled a weed out of the ground and, like, this terrible monster came out, to be honest. Well, we're on a site that a lot of teenagers go on now. Show me how it works. Like, how does, how does capping start? Well, basically, it's about two keystrokes for me to take a permanent record of what this girl's doing right now. So while she's just sitting in front of her screen, having an image of that, while she probably she obviously didn't consent to, um, isn't really going to be all that dangerous. But, of course, it does become dangerous if she had her shirt off, for example. How, how do they get kids like a girl like this to well, I mean, consider I've, exposing themselves? I've never witnessed that conversation happen firsthand, but if you watch the Amanda Todd video, she talks about being called beautiful and pretty and perfect and all that kind of stuff. So it's obviously playing into some kind of vulnerable mechanism that makes this girl want to kind of validate that with these strangers on the Internet, which is obviously extremely dangerous. Mm -hmm. So when you first started looking into this, you came across something called the Daily Capper? What's that? Yeah, so basically the Daily Capper is this newscast specifically designed to inform the capping world. So, the capping world. Yeah. Uh, it was made out of animated footage of a newscaster from a kid's TV show. Black Mailer of the Year. This one is for the rapists of the internet. They made uh -huh. that, and they also grabbed footage of these girls from Blog TV, and they made this little news pack that they would send out to cover the exploits of that world at any given time. So they would brag about it? There's an element of bragging, there's an element of entertainment, there's even an element of like really perverse humor. Just to let you know that tonight will be the revealing of the 2010 Capper Awards results. The Capper Awards? Wow. So they're proud of what they do. Welcome campers and campers. Campers. So this is so upsetting. This is really just a bunch of pedophiles taking advantage of young girls and bragging about it. Yeah, it shows you how dangerous it is when they're organized. But it doesn't look like this is in action anymore? They haven't posted a video since Halloween of 2011. So where, where are the cappers now? Are they still busy? Oh, absolutely. I mean, these um, Anon IB posts are active as of today. Um, you basically have a bunch of different subforms that categorize the content. Even more disturbing is that they have a, a subform for blackmailing entirely. So it seems to be like more or less inactive now after this, the Amanda Todd thing has brought a lot of unnecessary or unwanted attention to these people. Um, but basically what they do is they post a picture of a girl and they say, can anyone help me blackmail her? Like, I hear she's conservative or I hear this, I hear that. And then you'll see someone being like, email me and we'll chat further and blah, blah, blah. On how to get that girl to... Yeah. And then Expose. who knows how that conversation goes from there. But. So you can see messages like, here's a hot chick, can anyone get more of her? So they're encouraging each other to go on and blackmail people and then share the pics that they get. Yeah. And, and on and on. Amanda Todd is mentioned here. 
here's an image that we found on the blog TV board where you have, it's a split screen, a guy who has a speech bubble above him describing how, you know, very soon he's going to blackmail her and get more images for himself and his friends. And then you have this image of a girl and the speech bubble that this person wrote is basically saying how, you know, she trusts him and how, you know, ev inevitably she'll be his, basically. Um, and these message boards are, are full of stuff like that. You can see just normal pictures of her posted without any comment. So what you have is like this multi-headed monster, right? Each head is, you know, a different chat site or a different place where they can store their caps or a different place where they can, as pedophiles, gather and chat. So the problem is, it's not like all this is happening on one website. Huh. And to try and kind of dismantle this is nearly impossible because you would need constant monitoring of all the different sites they're on and the ability to take them down. But are these kids who are just desperate for attention and asking for trouble, or are they sucking in so-called normal kids? I don't think that's a fair distinction to be making. I think that there's a subtext there that, that kind of verges on victim blaming. I think that th what we're seeing here is like a serious lack of awareness of what you do on the internet can eventually become a public record, or a permanent record, rather. So whether these are normal kids, whether these are kids that are desperate for attention, they're children. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the bottom line. We wanted to get the RCMP's response to this story and get their advice to parents worried about online sexual extortion. We called them several times, but no one answered our requests.